Hello and welcome to part two of this tutorial for this dot mandala painting. In this video, I'm going to step you through the second half of this painting and finish with resin. I'll also give you a preview of a future video. So let's finish this beautiful piece. I hope you're following along with me. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. So hey, thanks for joining me for part two. So in the last video, this is where we left off. We started to add some blue into those petal shapes. And what I noticed was I hadn't used any large dots for a very long time. And I like to add contrast in a, in a variety of different ways. One being size, uh, another is color, another you might want to use a different kind of dimension, a dimensional dot, like a puffy dot, or you might want to change it up with a contrasting pattern. But in this case, I decided to throw in a super huge dot and see where that would take me. Okay, so surrounding these big huge dots, I'm just going to walk the dots in lighter shades of blue extending outward all the way to the points of those petal shapes. So one thing, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you might notice that I'm not using any drop shapes or swooshes or um, any uh, different shaped dots. They're all just straight dots because that's what I was doing at this time. That's all I knew. This, is, this video was made six months ago. And when I look back, I'm doing the voiceover now in July, which is how how much I am on top of my video production schedule. But to me, this just shows me how much I've progressed in those, what, six months? It's been, um, I've since then, I've really learned a lot and my dots have gotten tighter and smaller and I've added new paints to uh, my palette. And I think that if you put in the practice you can really see results, like better results in your work very quickly with dotting. And, um, you know, I look at all the, you know, really great dotting artists work and I'm just like, oh, I'll never get there. Oh, you know, it's inspiring, but at the same time, it's like, why are they so good? And I'll tell you why. It's because they practice, they've put in the work and, um, you know, it's, it's not easy, but you will see results. And that's what, that's why I keep practicing. I just want to get better. So, Hey, speaking of other dotting artists that inspire you, why don't we do a thing where we shout out in the comments below who we are currently inspired the most by. It can be an Instagram artist or Facebook artist, or really anyone who's doing work right now that you really feel inspired by. Leave a note in the comments below. I'm always into finding new artists. So I got a little sidetracked there, but I want to commit to you that I'm going to lock back in. I'm going to get refocused on this video and I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing because I've done a terrible job of that so far. So what I'm doing here is I am trying to create a gradient by using my largest stylus tool and I'm walking the dots from one side of the petal shape to the other and I'm going from red to yellow. This amateur hour, honestly. I cannot work under these conditions, cinematographer. Okay, I'm back and everything is fine. So let's complete this painting, shall we? 
Okay, so we had to skip ahead a little bit, but uh, now we're into these little ribbon sections right here. And I really like um, this technique. So what you do is you walk the dots down one side and then you walk them up the other side. And what that does is it kind of makes it look like a ribbon almost. Um, kind of makes the center look like it's coming out. So what I did was put the darkest blues on the inside sections and made a gradient pattern. Um, so going from a dark blue to a light blue in those sections. So it looks like a piece of ribbon that's twisted. Now, one thing you might notice in this painting is that a lot of my dots are spreading and kind of running into each other. And at the time, I was using a very fluid liquid acrylic paint. Um, I now prefer something with a little bit more of a dense consistency, something that's thicker and kind of stays put when you place the dot. Um, but at this time, I I didn't know that that was available. I like more of a soft body to my paints now, but um, yeah, that's just um, something that you will learn with time, what, what kind of paints that you enjoy using. I still think that this painting worked, um, but if I have a choice, I'll, I'll skip using this brand and go with my preferred choice now. Look out, she's got a compass. Okay, so here I'm adding a circle right from the center, and it's okay that there's a little tiny divot in that center dot. That's just gonna get covered with top dots eventually, so that's fine. So I'm just using the compass to give me concentric circles all the way around so it gives me a guide so I know where my dots are gonna go. Okay, so now the next row, I'm just I'm moving into yellow, and you just wanna try and get the same number of dots in every space if you can. Wow, so you know, I haven't had a mistake in a really long time. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh, oh no, here we go. Yeah, that's not good. So, number one, that proves that this paint is too liquidy. And number two, that also proves that silicone tools really are the best because they get you out of a jam every time. So here you'll notice I'm trying to figure out how many dots I can fit in that space and I try and cram four in, that doesn't work. And then finally right here I figure out, okay, three dots right here is gonna be the perfect size and space for what I need. Now with the work that I'm doing right now, what I, I would definitely make sure that I had the spacing correct before I moved on, I would have probably redone those sections with four dots but at this point um, I was just I was really pleased with the piece I wanted to see it completed and um, I just let that go
there are there's some parts of a painting that are just more of a highlight than others and that first center dot um, having different sections come together getting to see colors interact with each other adding top dots there are some that some moments that are just extra fun um, so what are your favorite moments in a piece when you're working on a painting what is it that you like? Do you like the finishing? Do you like the starting? Do you like picking the colors? Do you like adding resin to everything like me? What do you love about this journey? Share it in the comments below. So here I'm using my 1 8 inch pointed silicone tool and just doing little micro dots all along the edge of that ribbon shape on the opposite side. See, now I promised there would be resin. So here we are. This is the last final steps. I added some gold, but now I'm coming in with a wet Q-tip and just washing off all the chalk lines. And um, it's really important to get rid of those before you resin because the resin will lock it in. But once those chalk lines are erased, we can add the resin and make it shiny. So I'm going to try and explain as much as I can about what I've learned about resin as of July 2019, which is, um, you know, I learned something different with every single time that I use resin. Um, every time it is a messy, messy mess. Uh, as an understatement, uh, wear your gloves. And, uh, you know, my bangs are still recovering from that one time. But uh, it's, it's growing out. It's working. But uh, yeah, wear your gloves. Make sure that you check that your surface is level. I did this on my back patio just expecting that, of course, it's a back patio. It's, it should be level, right? But no. No. Surprise! My, my patio is not level. So what happened was all the resin kind of pooled on one side, on the lower side on this disc. Um, and yeah, so you just, that's an easy thing to check before you add your resin. Make sure your surface is level. Make sure that when it dries overnight, it's covered with some kind of plastic container so that dust and bugs and any kind of air particles don't land in your resin and ruin it that way. Also, make sure to take care when you're resining uh, canvas. Sometimes it can pool in the center if your canvas isn't super tight. Um, you shouldn't have a problem with anything wood, obviously, because it's a hard surface. But that's something to keep in mind. And then when you resin paper, the color of the paper darkens about 50%, depending on what paper you use. So something to keep in mind when you are working with resin on your next project Guaranteed you'll learn something from it. It'll make you better for the next time, but yeah, thought I'd just share those tips. Okay, so there, apparently I didn't take video of the finishing of the resin on this piece, so I'm going to just pop in with some future video footage. And this is taking the torch to the resin. Um, this is like a cook, a cook's torch. I guess they use it for like... Uh, you know toasting marshmallows I don't know I'm not a cook but basically you just pop that sucker on the top of your resin and get all the bubbles out and it smooths it out to a glass like finish um, and that's all you need to do and then it comes out like this yay so thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed painting this little painting and 
I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And hey, I'm gonna keep you updated on the Mandala Wall of Voting. I think number six is winning, but who knows? So, uh, thanks again, guys, and have a great week. And if you want to, come visit me at the Dotting Center for all your dotting supply needs. Thanks, guys.